Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are testing a new palette at Sephora. The Too Faced Born This Way Sunset Strip. So if you saw, I got this in my Sephora Spring Savings event haul. <laughs> I don't know why, to be honest, because the color story is nothing revolutionary. But for some reason, I always get suckered in by the new Too Faced palettes. Although I don't have the first one in the Born This Way line, the Natural Nudes I believe it's called, because that one just looked exactly like the Maybelline Nudes of New York, which I have already. But this one got me, even though it looks extremely similar. I'll put a picture, if I can, of both like side by side because they look very similar. I just feel like this one is maybe more it has less pink in it, kind of. It's more like beige. I don't know. You'll see. Well, you'll see in this picture, and I'll show you the palette soon. <laughs> so, but you guys know I just like to give some information. I like to read what it says on the packaging, what it says on Sephora, because I like to test whether what the brand says about their product, if it's actually what it is, if you know what I mean. So this one, it says on the back, inspired by the warm, sultry, sexy, sun-kissed skin of beach babes frolicking in the surf and sand of Malibu. These 16 rich, creamy, highly pigmented, modern nudes range from flattering to sultry matte, metallic, shimmer, and sparkle shades for looks so naturally alluring they'll think you were born in LA. <laughs> So this palette does have a fragrance, like most Too Faced palettes, and I couldn't find anything about it. I don't know what it is, although I could tell you it smells like sunscreen. And I went on the Too Faced website because I was like, maybe they said there, but they're not saying on Sephora. But all it says on Too Faced website, um, it says it's... It smells just like California sunshine. So, I don't know. To me, it, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because it does smell like sunscreen. So let me just open this. So this is the outside packaging. It's the same as the palette packaging. So yeah, the packaging on the outside is much different from the first one and this is what it looks like inside. There's a nice mirror, which is like a heavy thing. It's what actually gives the palette like quite a, a weight to it. It's from this mirror. And then these are the shades. So I don't know, for some reason, I really liked how this looked. Just like the way, like there's a, a light, like it goes from light to dark. And I think you can get some good, like, you know, dimension from that. And the shimmer shades look really pretty. Some of them have, like, that wet... They look kind of like creams in the pan. Um, so Too Faced has done that before in, like, the Teddy Bear palette, which I have. And I can compare that one to this, although it's not very similar, in my opinion. But yeah, I'm just really excited about this. I like when I look at a palette and I can see a look right away. Like basically all these like quadrants are could be a look like in themselves, which I really enjoy. So yeah, I picked this one up. And yeah, I don't even know how to, how to describe the scent. But I will say it smells like it could be a perfume, like in a bottle, like someone would wear. So I don't know what it's reminding me of, but it has like that sunscreeny kind of smell. So if you hate aromas, I mean, you probably wouldn't buy from Too Faced anyway, because I think, do they ever release anything that doesn't have a scent? I don't think so. So yeah, is that all I wanted to say? Oh yeah, I just wanted to say there are some like weird ingredients in this palette, like the highlighted ingredients. The first one is coconut water, which supposedly aids in delicately replenishing skin's moisture levels. 
Alpine Rose supports skin's health and resilience and hyaluronic acid gives a smoother, more youthful appearance. I don't know how those ingredients translate into an eyeshadow formula, but that's what it says on Sephora. Yeah, there's not good reviews about this, but the the first question is really funny. It says, this palette looks exactly the same as the Born This Way palette. The only difference to me is the outside packaging picture is the same palette. If not, what is different about it <laughs> from the Born This Way? So yeah, I think, but I, I do, I will say, I think the picture on Sephora makes this more muted. I don't know if you can see in person. It's, it has more of like a rosiness in this section. I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to make excuses as to why I bought this. Uh, I will say this is also, for some reason, this palette is $2 more than the Natural Nudes palette which I don't understand why, because it's the same packaging, the same format, so I don't know. So I wouldn't have bought this on at full price um, because it's $67, and I feel like that is a lot of money for a Too Faced palette. I don't know if they're raising their prices or if they just chose to make this one a bit more expensive than the other one. I don't know. But anyway, that's enough blabbering. So I do have my face makeup on already, of course, and I have the Urban Decay Primer Potion on because I use that with every palette. So to be consistent, I used it again today. And yeah, so I'm actually, I have to go to Easter dinner <laughs> tonight. And I did want to do a more Easter look, but I also have a brunch tomorrow, so I think I'll do that for that. Um, but today I just really wanted to try this palette out. I think I'm just going to be boring, and I want to use these four shades. I know that's like the boringest part of the palette, but I also have the new Patrick Ta palette, so I want to save that for like a rosy look, so I'm not going to go here. But I will start with these four and then if I need to like deepen it up, I'll, you know, go somewhere else. So, firstly, what I like about this palette is that there's a matte cream shade. It's a bit deeper than what I would normally go for. And my lighting is, I'm right in front of a window, it's kind of making this look lighter than it is. So that's why I'm saying like it's a bit deeper than normal, but let's see. So there's a lot of kick up in the pan, if you can see that, which is, I don't care, but for some reason I feel like I always have to mention that because everyone else on YouTube mentions that, but I did, I kind of feel like I like like when a palette has kick up, it's kind of a good sign that it's gonna be more pigmented and like generally easier to blend, so. Yeah, so this went on, I mean, it's just a cream shade, so it's fine. Um, but I don't know if you can see, like it's a bit more on the tan side than like a shade I would normally use to set my eye primer. So then for the crease, I'm gonna go into this like camel brown shade. Oh, by the way, the first shade was called High Tide. This one is called Nude Beach. Ooh. That's pretty. This is like my typical transition shade. Very smooth. And it's not grabbing anywhere. I guess I'll just do this one eye on camera to save time. Because I don't want this video to be a million years long. But I think I should zoom in. That's what it's looking like so far, pretty like basic. <laughs> then we have this like really fun looking 
metallic shade called Suns Out. Do you see how like sparkly that looks? I think I want to put that like from the, I guess the outer two thirds <laughs> of my eyelid. And maybe I should use my finger. So I just got my nails done and they're much shorter. So I think now I can do that. Oh, okay. It feels like kind of like the shimmers in the Patrick Ta, like the feeling, but it's obviously not that like kind of flaky glittery formula. It's more like this smooth, please focus. <laughs> it's smooth like metallic, if you can see that. It looked like in the pan it was gonna be more chunky than it is. So let's see. Oh, okay. It's very like wet looking. That's really pretty. So maybe with a brush, I just wanna like blend, like not make the edges so harsh. Okay, it also, it moves with the brush too if you or someone that prefers to use a brush. I mean, I would suggest this kind of brush, like a really flat, dense brush, because if not, I don't know. I don't think you'll be able to pick this up on like a fluffy brush because it's so like, it's almost like a cream texture. That's really pretty though. Very smooth and there's no like, glitter anywhere on my face. Okay, that's nice so far. So of course I have to use this shade, Shall We Dance? This is the one that looks like, um, like it's just wet. Like, I don't know if you can, how well that's coming across on camera, but I don't even know, like, should I use my finger? I guess so. Whoa, okay. It's actually more flaky than I thought it would be. If you can see that, it's more flaky than the shade was. Now I'm scared that's gonna be <laughs> too, like, icy. Let's see. Oh, look what happened. Yeah, so that shade is flaky, very flaky. So I'm being very careful. Oh, okay, there's a pink, a pink shift to that shade. I don't know if you can see. Okay, so with this, with these shades, there's I think two others, yeah. So there's also this shell, yeah and this sandy cheeks that look to be the same formula. So like, maybe don't <laughs> go in super rough with your finger on those because you will pick up lots of flakiness. But then, as you can see, like, if you pat it on gently and then swipe, it's really like smooth in the end. So it's just a little scary at first. So I brought that in the inner corner as well. That looks really pretty. Uh, I didn't think it had a pink shift, but I don't mind it. It goes nicely um, with the other shades. Okay, that was super easy. I do think I need a deeper shade to give some more definition in the outer corner. So I think I'm gonna use the shade Coco Glow. I hope that's brown. I mean, these these two shades next to it are making it look kind of burgundy, but I mean, it's called Coco Glow. Oh no, that's brown. And that just felt so smooth on my finger. Like very finely milled. That looks pretty. That's what it looks like in a swatch. Yeah, because this shade, um, Sun Chaser, this one is like, 
very similar to this one, right? So I need the cocoa glow for the depth. So I need like a smaller brush. I'm running out of brushes that are clean. <laughs> I think this one will be okay. This is the Vintage Cosmetic Company. Um, probably a set that came in a boxy charm. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna... That looks super pigmented. And I don't... I don't want to like smoke it out. I just want some like depth here. So I'm kind of making that a wing with like the shape and then bringing it into the crease here. See how it just gives like a bit of, I don't know, definition to the outer corner. I think that's all I want to do. That was just a very like, light application but i feel like if i packed this one on it would be very dark for the lower lash line i just hit myself <laughs> with this brush i'm gonna go back in the shade nude beach and just bring that under here to like connect the the wing that I did. I will take a bit of the Cocoa Glow, so the deep brown shade on the outer corner here. Yeah, that shade's very pigmented, so just using a tiny bit on a pencil brush. I'm liking this. This is I just feel like Too Faced palettes are so easy to use and that's what I like about them. I just feel like they're very beginner friendly and usually like what you see in the pan is how it'll look on the eye and yeah, it's just like a very easy formula to use. That took me like no time at all. And I feel like it looks like I have a lot more shadows like different shades on my lid than I do from that Shall We Dance like shade because it has a shift and I blended it into the um, the Suns Out shade. It just looks really nice and like wet on the eye. So that was really easy. <laughs> yeah, I, the only thing is if that's something that bothers you, the Shall We Dance is the lightest shimmer shade in the palette and it has a pink shift so if you use that on your inner corner like I would do like I usually take the lightest shimmer shade in a palette for my inner corner it's always going to be pink so just keep that in mind but I don't mind that and I can always go in with my highlighter to put on top if I want a different look so I think that's good. I think I do have like a tiny piece of fallout here, but nothing major. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this so far. So I'm gonna do the other eye um, off camera and do my mascara and all that. And yeah, I'll be back <laughs> to, I don't know give you my final thoughts or something. Okay, so here is the final look. I really like it. <laughs> it's very simple and probably a look I could do with a lot of other palettes, but I'm really happy with how the shadows performed and how easy it was to use. So yeah, uh, let's zoom you back out. Um, I also just used my usual Maybelline Sky High. I think it's almost empty. And my Tarte Nude Eyeliner on the waterline because my eyes were red as usual. And I think I need more blush. Um, I'm using the Rose Ink 
lip and cheek color in Azalea from my shop my stash and with my new brush that I got during the sale the Sephora Pro foundation number 47 it's a foundation brush but I got it to use for my cream blushes um, I just feel like I think this formula is not lasting very long on me at least like not with the other um, products that I'm using. It's very like sheer and emollient. So I feel like I have to build it up quite a bit. Anyway, I'm gonna be doing a full face of rose ink. So <laughs> I'll probably talk more about that in that video. Just gonna go over that with the sponge. Now it looks a bit too much. <laughs> oh well. Right, so I wanted to show you a comparison with my other Too Faced palettes. Well, first of all, let me show you my Maybelline Nudes of New York because as I mentioned in the intro, because I had this palette, I didn't get the natural nudes, but now that I look at it, it's very similar to this one too. I don't want to bend this backwards because I'm afraid it's going to crack. It, it's not, like it doesn't want to naturally bend all the way, so just to mention that. But look at this. So this is the Maybelline Nudes of New York. This one, obviously. And this is the Sunset Strip. Um, yeah, it's pretty similar, except for like this section here. There is none of these like really mauve tones. Um, yeah, and the Sunset Strip has a black. I didn't use it today, so I don't know like how good it is, but if you like having a black shadow in your palettes, this one has a black and there was no black shade in the natural nudes, so. But those are these two together. But also like this Maybelline one obviously doesn't have those very like foily metallic shades. So yeah, but of course this is like 20 something dollars Canadian and this is 67, <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then my other Too Faced palettes, I have the Too Faced Shake Your Pom Poms. This is, no, this is not. This, I mean, there's obviously the pinks because Too Faced always has those like mid-tone pink shades, but the Shake Your Pom Poms has a green and it's just generally gonna give you, I mean, you could do a similar look, but I don't know. This is one of my favorite palettes, so I don't, I'm not mad that I have both of these. And then the Teddy Bear palette, I thought might be interesting because this is another palette where they started doing that very like flaky, shimmery kind of formula that looks wet in the pan, but as you saw, like once you touch it, it's quite flaky. So the Teddy Bear is more pink and rosy than the Sunset Strip. And you can't really tell anymore, but the Teddy Bear had those shades that Huda Beauty does with like, it looks like chunks of like white pigment in it, but I used them so it kind of all, well, you can see it in this one here. So that was different for this palette. I really like this one. I have a video on this if you're interested. I can link it below if I remember. And then for some reason, I felt the need to bring out my Sweet Peach. Although, I mean, again, very Too Faced, but of course the Sweet Peach has peaches in it and a green and purples, so. That's those. And these like older Too Faced palettes don't have those very foily matte shades. And let's see it with the chocolate bar. I think this will be more similar. Well, the chocolate bar looks pretty 
Oh my god. Pretty muted next to this one. Yeah. And there's like those purples and a burgundy kind of. Well, yeah. So there's those two. And I also have the Just Peachy Mattes. Because I think some of the matte shades could be quite similar in this one. Oh, this one smells really good. <laughs> I much prefer the peach scent uh, than this California sunshine, whatever that is. But, um, yeah. This one, I don't know. Same kind of like mid-tone browns, but this one obviously has peach shades in it. But, I mean, I'm just showing you this like in case you have these other palettes and looking at this one you might be like, well I don't need that. But like all palettes have <laughs> these like, you know, brown tan shades because they work great as transition shades and they help to like blend out deeper mattes or like deeper shimmer shades. So yeah. And just for fun, I brought out my Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2, which I haven't used yet. But if you were looking at both of these, because they just they kind of came out at the same time, this actually looks quite similar. Because yeah, see what I mean? The Patrick Ta shimmers. They look like they're going to be the same as these, but these ones, as you saw when you swatch it, it's like a very smooth metallic, but the Patrick Ta, let me just swatch one of these. Well, it kind of actually looks <laughs> the same, this one. I just swatched this shade here. Um, yeah, so actually... This one is kind of smooth, so that doesn't prove my point at all. Maybe this one. No, that one is smooth too. So these shimmers are different from the the ones in the Major Dimension 1. So I should have checked that first. But I have it right here, so let's just look. So if I swatch this shade... Yeah, this is more like a topper but these two are different okay i really need to get <laughs> to testing the major dimension too because honestly that it feels the same as the ones in the Too Faced palette so that's interesting i should probably like yeah well that's a, i'm also planning to do a video on the patrick ta major dimension too so maybe i could compare those but I mean, I don't know, the Patrick Ta is 87 so it's $20 more than the Too Faced one. But I feel like there's a different audience for the Patrick Ta and the Too Faced. So I don't know how useful that comparison is. But I just thought it was interesting considering these palettes came out like at the same time basically. The Patrick Ta ones do have more like glitter in them you can see that and there's like not really glitter in these but just like a fine shimmer so that was all the palettes I wanted to compare I think overall I am happy I picked this up I really like how it looks I just feel like the color story is nothing we haven't seen many times before but I do like the formulas and how everything blended together and I could blend the mattes on top of the metallic shades. Some palettes I do not like when their formulas don't blend well together because then I don't see the point of it being a palette because I want to use like multiple shades in a palette when I use a palette. So that's annoying. So this one I like it for that reason and yeah. I just don't know about this 
fragrance it's nothing horrible like i do i did get like some whiffs of it as i was using the palette but it's not like irritating to me and it doesn't i don't know it doesn't like feel like it's irritating my eyes at all so that's good but i guess that's all i have for this video i don't know if it was useful i feel like i'm the only person who was interested in <laughs> this palette so at least now I I know how I feel about it, but if you want to see more looks with it or something, I don't know, I did a very, you know, basic kind of look that you would expect from this kind of palette. But I hope you like this video anyway. I feel like my blush is patchy. Anyway, that's for a different video. But. Yeah, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!